So I'm out here today uh, in the backyard trying to make our air conditioners run more efficiently by utilizing uh, an air to water heat exchanger to improve on the air to air heat exchangers uh, that the air conditioner is designed with. Normally the compressor takes the refrigerant through the large suction line, compresses it into these coils which make it hot and then it uses a fan to suck you know hot outside air over these even hotter coils and cools them down it then sends that through a small refrigerant line into your house where the reverse happens the gas expands cooling it and the air blows over that so this little line refrigerant tubing carries the the still warm gas although the cooler it is the better so i am using this uh Air Fox D superheater, which is designed to take that heat and trade it with water going through this other tube, and there's a pump that circulates it. So the cooler that you can make this gas going into the house, the cool cooler your air conditioning will work. And then you're taking that waste heat and using it to preheat water in a water heater. Although in this case, I'm just going to pump that water through a swamp cooler, which will be warm probably even hot water coming out and it will evaporate very quickly. I'll get 60 degree water out of the bottom of that and feed it into the house. And I'm having some concerns about this type of heat exchanger out here. It does have freeze stats on it and it'll circulate water, etc. but that's just a waste of energy. So I really don't want this on the outside of the house. This goes into a crawl space here that runs about 20 feet in a straight line. So I'm not gonna use this um, I was also kind of concerned that really all it is are two pipes next to each other wrapped in tin foil, about three wraps of it. So I don't see that being super uh, efficient. So what I'm doing instead, I kind of rigged up a model here. Uh, this is a coaxial heat exchanger. I um, drilled out the stops in these compression fittings. So I do have to cut into the refrigerant line in order to slide all this on. This piece of blue pipe will actually be replaced by probably about 10 feet of 10 or 20 feet of, of packs, whatever I can fit in that crawl space. So the refrigerant will just go on about its merry way like normal without there being a, uh, that was the other thing here, was there was a change in pipe size. And I think that might have affected um, our refrigerant. I was, I was worried about that as well. So here it's the same 3 8 line all the way through. It's just jacketed. And I can pump my cold water, you know, in and out or in and out either way. And uh, see so how that goes. So down here in the crawl space where the refrigerant lines come in, they're wrapped in foam. And then this one curves around and goes all the way down to the furnace over there. So I'll be able to get, I probably won't even need more than, I'll do probably one 10 foot section of pipe to jacket and coax the heat exchanger. So down here in the crawl space, I've undone the small high pressure line, the hot side, and I've slid my first ferrule and fitting all the way down here. And I've followed it with a shark bite and I'm following it now with the PEX line, which will carry the water jacket around the hot pipe. We got 93 degrees, 11% humidity outside. Inside it's 72 degrees. So we're gonna do a test of this big train five ton air conditioner uh, hooked up with that coaxial heat exchanger where we're gonna try it both with and without water flow. So down here in the mechanical room uh, where the furnace uh, and coil are, it's actually only a four ton coil. So this is not a super efficient way to do this, um, but the trusty clamp meter here is showing uh, we're running around about 19 and a half amps uh, at 240 volts and now that's running with the system with no water so at its normal See operation. See what how cold the air is coming off that inner coil uh, 47 degrees and toggling. We've got the hot water coming back off the exchanger going to this uh, evaporative cooler which cools the water down and I'm taking a temperature sample on it here run about a gallon a minute so that water is coming out warmer than it's than it's going in due to the heat exchange and you can see here the compressor is drawing slightly less power 
due to the fact that it's uh, compressing a cooler gas. And then over here, we are running really about the same temperature. I think it might be a degree cooler. We'll give it a little time here and see if it cools down anymore just to equalize. Okay, so the water coming out of the heat exchanger is running just below 88 degrees. And we're going to check, I think the ingoing temperature is probably going to be about 60. We have 63 degree water going into the heat exchanger. And so what, 23, 24 degree temperature increase. Uh, it took uh, 49 seconds to fill one gallon. So that was a gallon in about 50 seconds. I'll figure out the BTUs based on that. But 63 degree water cooling the pipe is a whole lot better than the 93 degree air. The compressor is heating up to 102 degrees. So 73 gallons an hour equals 602 pounds per hour multiplied by our temperature increase equals just about 14,000 BTUs per hour that we're removing additionally into the water. That's about a 28% heat improvement plus about a 5% improvement based on the amperage being lower. So we're getting 43 degree refrigerant coming back from the coil inside the house so we're not putting as much heat back into that inside as I'd like to see. Uh, that's pretty cold refrigerant to be entering the compressor. So the hot high pressure gas is coming in from the outside at 69 degrees. This is before it expands and gets really cold inside the coil here. Normally that would be coming in at least what outside ambient temperature is, which is currently 95 degrees. So the fact that we're getting 69 degree hot gas, uh, I'm surprised this coil isn't freezing out. So the refrigerant leaving the coil in the basement is 38 degrees, so we're still above freezing there. But that's uh, certainly nice cold gas we could be pulling a lot, putting a lot more heat into. Um, I think this system, if it had two four ton coils on it, uh, with the same compressor, would probably run at twice the efficiency. So we're not really seeing a very big improvement considering all considered but this coil can only pull four tons of heat out uh, just based on the airflow through it that jives with what our pressure gauges are showing here on the cold side uh, running about 32 degrees just at the uh, outlet here or inlet rather to the compressor so the fact that we're seeing like 37 downstairs Intolerance here. What this experiment tells me is that uh, th this unit is actually fairly efficient. This is a super high efficiency five ton train. It's a really nice unit, but um, ultimately we could run that same four ton coil inside with this with a little compressor like this. This unit only draws about 1600 watts versus about 4000. So we could get the same amount of cooling out of this 1600 watt uh, condenser utilizing the coaxial heat exchanger and uh, get rid of this much bigger unit.